clips, Marvel and Capcom. How important Marvel vs. Capcom 2 actually is to you, much less the history of video games. How much do you love Marvel 2? And give them a reason to bring that back. I want What's up guys, Omni here. You guys know how it goes, another day, another video. Last night I tweeted I sleep. What recent news, topics, tweets, videos you want me to talk about tomorrow? And uh, yeah, um, <laughs> today is August 9th, it's Monday, and it's uh, today is my birthday. Uh, <laughs> yep. Uh, today is my birthday. I know traditionally when it comes to birthdays, you know, I'm supposed to be, you know, getting a present, things of that nature. But uh, I actually have two presents uh, for you guys today. That's right. I have two presents for you guys on my birthday because, you know, that's just how nice I am. First gift is here's Andy. I know I haven't shown him in a while. He's got a haircut. But uh, yeah, here's my boy. Here's my son. And uh, he he says hi um, to you guys. Uh, he misses you greatly, right, Indy? Mm. Number two, your second gift is, um, remember I kept saying I was planning on new content? Um, guys, it's nothing special. I think I'm just going to start reacting to more videos. That's it. <laughs> That's literally it. I don't know why it sounds so controversial. You know, like, I'm a commentator. I've basically been doing that with news articles and even videos all this time. But for some reason, it feels kind of weird to say, like, hey, I might add that to the roster. So, yeah, that's the secret project. I'm just trying to figure out how to effectively implement it. But, yeah, when I say react, I don't mean, like, you know, like, watch a video for, like, two minutes without saying something or something like that. I actually plan on trying to put on some effort and process in the old reaction phase, maybe with some comedy with my personality and stuff like that. So that's the project. I've been talking to a bunch of YouTubers. They, they swear by it. They say that I need to add that to my repertoire or whatever in order to get more upload counts if I'm ever going to reach 1 million subscribers. And yeah, I have a bunch of friends who also do it as well who've been like killing it on YouTube. So if you guys want to help, uh, follow me on Twitter.com and uh, yeah, send me some videos. You know, good ones that are trending, maybe a little controversial, uh, some things that are more recent, and we can kind of bring it into the whole news segment of reacting to news and articles, but also reacting to recent news videos. Put it together, get one shabang bang bang, and you guys can get videos every single day. That's that's the goal, that's the idea. Let's let's try to make that work. Oh, and number three, a secret gift. I'm gonna be doing a celebration stream today on um, twitch.tv slash Infernal Omni. The link is in the description below. If you guys wanna come on stream and celebrate with me, I don't know what I'm gonna be doing. I don't know what games I'm gonna be playing. I'm just gonna probably be talking with you guys and then we'll kind of just you know go at it you know uh <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to be hanging out with you guys and we'll make it up along the way. So yeah, twitch.tv slash Inferno Omni. Come hang out with me today. I don't know what time is going to start, but it's going to happen sometime today. But anyway, yeah, uh, long intro, just, you know, birthday intro. So uh, thanks for sticking around if you're still here. Now let's get into the topics that you guys wanted to talk about. There's some some weird news that's been happening over the past couple of days. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll just uh, kind of go over it. So number one and in world news, something that you guys should probably all know. But uh, yeah, the Tokyo 2020 Olympics has finally come to a close and in case you guys were curious about the the final standing of the teams basically uh united states pulled the uh number one rank in the world by getting 39 gold medals one gold medal over uh people's republic of china uh, i believe though their total score 113 showed that they actually had more silver and bronze overall so they were more congested but uh yeah in case you guys were curious uh number one went to usa uh two went to china three went to japan uh number four went to great britain uh number five roc australia number six netherlands number seven france number eight Germany number nine and Italy number 10. Now there's obviously a lot more countries, but I'm not gonna <laughs> read out every single one for you guys. But yeah, uh, I watched uh, a lot of the Olympics actually. When I go to the gym, uh, I usually cut on the Olympics and I was watching a lot of different sports. I, was, I think the biggest one that was kind of interesting was uh, women's climbing, which was really cool. They had like speed climbing and all this jazz and I had never seen like, like wall climbing super fast, like a Spider-Man and stuff like that. But yeah, it was pretty cool to watch people, you know, go out there and and do their best uh succeed and fail and be the best at what they do so yeah that's always nice to watch but yeah that's the end we're gonna have to wait another four years for the olympics let me know how you guys feel about the olympics and you know that you know just that's it. That, that's it. <laughs> Number two, and what you guys need to know, uh, Amari, and a lot of you guys have asked me to say this, but and everyone is saying it, but JoJo Part 6. Let me turn it down. I'm going to have this in the background. You know, I, probably give me copyrighted if I don't touch it, whatever. Anyway, it says, get ready, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Stone Ocean, premieres on Netflix worldwide this December. That's, that's a long time from now, but it is a new JoJo, finally starring who I believe is Jotaro's 
daughter. Uh, and it's called JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Stone Ocean. Uh, it's one of the biggest highly acclaimed animes of all time in terms of just how wild it is. And guys, if you haven't watched uh, a JoJo show, you probably need to get on it. Um, everyone's really excited for this. I'm excited for this. And yeah, in case you guys want to see the trailer, it's right here. It's, it's high quality anime. And the fact that it's coming out on Netflix worldwide first is absolutely just, that's not normal, right? Usually it comes out on like some kind of anime service or Crunchyroll. But uh, yeah, um, coming out on Netflix first and you love to see it and you love to see anime prosper. I, it, it, this is going to be so cool. All right. So Crescent said, you already know, I got to do it. Uh, what do you think about the pushback Keem or Keemstar is getting due to landing a 20 year old girlfriend? For those of you guys who don't know, Keemstar, the host of hashtag drum alert, uh, apparently is uh, divorced with his wife or ex-wife or whoever he was with. And uh, now he is dating a 20 year old girl and uh, a lot of people online have been making a, a big fit of it because the man is 40. I don't know exactly how he is. I think he's over 40 or something. But yeah, he's dating a 20 year old girl and uh, <laughs> the internet is big baby rage mad about it. Like literally, if you type Keemstar into Twitter, it says Keemstar girlfriend. Now, I'm not going to go into super detail about this because in my opinion, I think this is a, a non news new situation. It's one of those things that because it's Keemstar, uh, people are going to talk about it and trash it. From what I understand, uh, people like Trisha Paytas and H3H3 have actually turned this into a topic of this of debate and have talked negatively about Keemstar about the situation, whereas <laughs> they, well, obviously they hate him. So of course they're going to talk negatively about Keemstar, but I think this is becoming a situation and an issue just because it is Keemstar. To be honest, the only reason why I'm entertaining this conversation is because it's funny to me. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I keep star made a tweet. I think this is her. It says she really thinks she's cooler than me. And it's a picture of what appears to be uh, his girlfriend in a Corvette. And uh, I, I saw the first comment, which was hilarious. It said, yo, imagine raising your daughter for 20 years and she brings her boyfriend home for dinner and it's f***ing Keemstar. <laughs> Oh, God. You imagine him coming to your dinner table and be like, let's get right. <laughs> Anyway, without subjecting you guys to all of the Trisha Payton quotes and tweets and videos and stuff like that, uh, the whole situation is basically Keemstar saying that Trisha Payton has been projecting, uh, simply saying that her history with her men in her lives is something that she's projecting onto Keemstar and the girl basically suggesting that, you know, Keemstar is going to ruin this girl and that she apparently has daddy issues. Uh, whereas Keemstar is like, uh, no, my girlfriend actually doesn't have daddy issues. She has a really nice family and they've went to dinner together and it's nothing like what you think it is so Trisha Paytas what she normally does is she makes everything about her and then you know pushes that negative energy onto other people to make sure that she's right that's just what she does that's what I see from her and this is just a neutral standpoint this is not me not liking Trisha Paytas this is just a pattern that I've seen from Trisha <laughs> uh, where she just basically projects onto other people her own insecurities and then and then, yeah. But yeah, in my opinion, I don't care. I think everyone's just making this a big deal because there's not a lot of news to talk about. So they want to latch onto something, anything that they can to kind of make it news, which I'm not really going to hate about because news is what, you know, makes currency in the world go around. It gets people talking, so that's fine. But um, I think a lot of people want to jump down Keemstar's throat because a lot of people don't like Keemstar. So if they can find something that can stick, uh, <laughs> then they'll definitely throw a dart at him. Let me see if I can find it. I think the other day, guys, it was like a Netflix show. Uh, I can't remember what it was called, but it was like <laughs> an older person who was like a billionaire or something. They were like at least 50 or 60 plus, right? And then they would be almost getting engaged or married to somebody who was like 20 or 21 or 22. And it was an actual Netflix show, right? It's, it's legit. It's literally being monetized. It's literally being watched and it's literally successful. And uh, I, I just, I don't remember seeing any of these people's energy towards something that's much bigger than just one person's relationship with two consenting adults versus having like a 65, 70 year old dude out here dating like a 20 year old, 25 year old girl. I, 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 where's the, where's the energy? I mean, I, I guess you can say like, oh yeah, I don't agree with that as well. 
but I still feel like this is just one of those classic situations where people just want to jump down Kim Star's throat. I get the situation, okay? I get the whole morale issue about the age gap. Uh, I, I understand some of your concerns. I understand that some of you might be disgusted and some of you guys don't care. For me, <laughs> I've seen a lot of terrible things on the internet and two consenting adults is not one of those terrible things, okay? I, I, it's not a situation where I'm stressed out or just like, why does this person exist on this platform? I, it doesn't actually require my attention or my my need to to address a concern because i've seen a lot we literally just got finished talking about chris chan the other day we literally got finished talking about edp like a week ago before that there's so much more horrible things <laughs> out there than two consenting adults and a legalized world in my opinion but that's just how i feel you guys are entitled to your opinion and if you don't like the fact that a 40 year old man is dating a 20 year old girl that's on you. You can hold that to your chest and to your heart and, and talk about it with other people who agree with you. And then the other you guys who don't care or who are on the other side and think it's fine because it's along with the legal system, y'all can go and y'all can fight about it all you want. But um, no, I, I'm much more concerned with the age gap differences that bridge between a non-consenting adult and a an adult, if you know what I mean. So a lot of you guys tell me about this. Name said Mr. Beast hit 10 million subscribers on his reacting channel, which is his third channel of his to hit 10 million subscribers. And <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> can I just hit 1 million, bro? God dang. Mr. Beast said reacts will be our third diamond play button and Mr. Beast shorts philanthropy are following right behind. And come to Mr. Beast's main channel. He has 66 million subscribers you go to his gaming channel he has 20 million subscribers and if you go to his react channel he has 10 million subscribers and um i i i i, I don't think i can reach 1 million i <laughs> i'm trying i'm uploading i'm doing my best tell me but that's super amazing for mr beast to be honest like that's I, I i cannot believe that has anyone else ever done that had three or more plus youtube channels where they have so many subscribers where they have three diamond play buttons or is this is this a first apparently he might even get four or five because he said mr beast shorts and mr beast philanthropy are literally falling behind i'm happy for mr beast i truly am but also <laughs> how how do i emulate what do i what okay how do i get this channel to 1 million subscribers again i've already talked about this about in the beginning of it about in terms of i probably need to upload more or something like that i don't know um but I want a million subs just because I just want to say that I did it. I, I want the button. I never got my silver play button and it would be pretty cool, right? To, for us to do it. I just, I just don't know how I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep making content and hopefully I can make it better and better for you guys. But just give me the secret sauce. Tell me the YouTube algorithm to help me to break it, to make it. So make sure that you guys subscribe and like the videos. Is my videos getting too long? Do I need to go back? To the you know the eight to ten minute videos every single day kind of things. Do I need to split these up? Do I need to change thumbnails? Do I need to change titles, bro? Help me, Mr. Beast. So Lay Mons Fruity said, talk about the Suicide Squad Electric Boogaloo. So I uh, I haven't watched it yet, but a lot of people are talking about this as well. Suicide Squad two came out, um, and apparently it was actually pretty good. Uh, the first Suicide Squad was not something that was highly acclaimed. Uh, a lot of people thought it was garbage doo doo butter. I'm pretty sure the critics review gave it terrible scores, along with the audience review scores. But apparently, Suicide Squad two, the sequel, uh, actually came out doing pretty well. In fact, holy hell, not pretty good, amazingly good. Right Rotten Tomatoes gave this thing a 91% tomato meter and an 84% audience score. Seeing, seeing an actual tomato meter be over the audience score for something like this is absolutely surprising. It means that the critics were like, yeah, this is a really well-made movie and the audience loved it as well. So uh, if you guys haven't watched Suicide Squad, you got to watch it. Apparently you can watch it on HBO Max and here's a consensus uh, and just, you know, no spoilers, obviously. Enlivened by writer-director James James Gunn's singularly skewed vision, The Suicide Squad, marks a funny, fast-paced rebound that plays to the source's material, violent, anarchic strengths. And the audience says, the story isn't amazing, but the over-the-top action and sometimes literally side-splitting gags makes The Suicide Squad a 
major an improvement. And for reference, guys, this is the original Suicide Squad that came out in 2016, and these were the scores that it got, a 25%, 59% audience score, and, and Jared Leto as the Joker, uh, just, you know, no one was really excited for that. So, yeah, huge improvement. Go watch it, and let me know if you guys did watch it. Let me know what you thought. Do you agree with the scores or not? Uncle Daddy said Kanye rising to the heavens, and... Uh, <laughs> It's a, <laughs> here's a clip here. Oh my God. Oh my God. There ain't no way. There ain't no way. So for those of you guys who don't know, Kanye West, uh, I, I forget where this was, like the, uh, some kind of uh, stadium or something like that. He did a streaming event. For uh, Donda, 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 I always say Donda, Donda, I think that's the name of his mother, but uh, it's a, an album that everyone's been waiting to drop, I haven't heard it yet, um, officially, I don't think it's been on, on any streaming services, but he did a live streaming service for people with, uh, as you guys can see here, and him actually rising up like that reminds me of that one Spongebob meme. <laughs> anyway, yeah, for whatever reason, like, Donda's release date keeps getting pushed back like a video game. I actually have no idea why. I don't know. Maybe he was featuring DaBaby, and he was like, oh, man, we got to drop this dude uh, after the comments. Apparently, DaBaby's been getting dropped left and right from sponsors from, from his homophobic comments. But, uh, yeah, it keeps getting pushed back, and now the new release date is August 15th. Who knows if that date is going to stick? But, yeah, I'm excited to listen to it, to be honest. I, I know Kanye has—he's— has, 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 He's been through some stuff, right? Been through the divorce with Kanye, that whole stuff with Trump. Has said some things about, like, slavery and all that jazz. Like, man's kind of sus. He's a sussy, sussy baka for sure. But, I mean, when he makes music and when he's on his mode and when he's in his zone, I I, I truly enjoy it. And I, and I hope to see that this is something that is a masterpiece from him. Just because this is, you know, this is what Kanye does. He, he makes music. If anything, if you doubt anything else that he does in life or whatever else he's been doing, he makes music and also he... He uh, is also a business person, too. He makes a lot of money off his brands, but um, his Yeezys. But yeah, that's Kanye. Let me know what you guys think. I don't know if you guys actually listened to it. Uh, if you didn't even listen to it, let me know. But uh, that's Donda, and I'm hoping that it's going to be album of the year. All right, so this is a follow-up to the whole Pokemon Go situation where I said I would eat my shorts. Um, <laughs> And uh, yeah, if you guys didn't see it, but off camera, I ate some shorts. Uh, Pokemon Go. Niantic responds to Pokemon Go boycott after the hashtag here is Niantic Trends. Now, uh, when I talked about this story a few days ago, last Thursday, I want to say, I do want to say I want to make it an update. I talked about how basically there was a hashtag where people were saying, for quality of life purposes, the radius of Pokemon Go was increased uh, because, you know, uh, of the pandemic. And so they made it so that, you know, there were more meters involved. So, like, instead of standing on top of a McDonald's, you know, place, you can be on the outskirts of the McDonald's. And there's plenty more space, but you're still, like, on a Pokestop or something like that. You can't go to a Pokestop from at home, okay? It's nothing like that. But you don't also all have to be crowded in one place. That was the quality of life adjustment that got reverted um, by Niantic, and Niantic has responded. I haven't heard what they had to say, but from what I understand, some people are still pissed off and they still plan on either just quitting the game or just only doing free to play. They don't plan on supporting Niantic. So let's read this article really fast and see how they responded. But yeah, here's Niantic's actual official webpage. Um, and they said a response to our Pokemon Go community. Technically, I said they wouldn't respond on August 9th. That's when the, the due date was. The community gave them a due date to respond by August 9th, but they didn't respond August 9th with it. They responded early. I cannot believe that they actually responded. I'm, I'm this is completely um, new to me. I'm used to like, you know, people complaining to like Nintendo, Nintendo never ever talking ever again. A response to our Pokemon Go community. Uh, we appreciate your letter and all your feedback. We hear you. We are humbled by your response. Not every game has such a passionate global based player base that we're fortunate enough to have virus and threat protection bro all right anyway uh like everyone else around the world our team has been working very hard to adapt to the global health environment the recent exploration bonus changes we've made in the u.s new zealand are designed to restore some of the foundational element players enjoyed prior to 2020 and reward players once again for moving and exploring encouraging people to explore exercise and safely play together in person remains niantic's mission so okay just basically staying there you know what they 
did initially. The health and well-being of our players is our top priority, which is why we have implemented the new exploration bonuses and select geographies where it's deemed safe to be outdoors. Research has shown that taking walks outside is safe and confers several health benefits. Furthermore, encouraging outdoor exploration is in keeping with Niantic's mission. That said, we will continue to monitor health and safety guidance related to outdoor activities and will make future changes if necessary. So, so far, if I'm reading this properly, they don't plan on changing squat. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like they're like, hey, we, we hear what you're saying, uh, but the goal of our game is to make it so that you get up and move. And if we want you to get up and move and you have to move around more, we want you guys to, we want to decrease the radius so that you have to move more. And we don't want to have to increase the radius of how much you have to move so that you can move less. That, I, it sounds like it's what they're trying to do. Continuing, we have heard your feedback about one change in particular, that of the pokey stop and gym interaction distance. We reverted the interaction distance from 80 meters back to the original 40 meters starting in the US and New Zealand because we want people to connect to real places in the real world and to visit places that are worth exploring. However, we have heard your input loud and clear. And so to address the concerns you have raised, we are taking the following actions. Oh, wait, what? You're actually, they're actually doing something? We are assembling an internal cross-functional team to develop proposals designed to preserve our mission of inspiring people to explore the world together while also addressing specific concerns that have been raised regarding interaction distance. Okay. I don't even know what that entire sentence even meant. We will share the findings of this task force by the next end game season change, September 1st. As a part of this process, we will also be reaching out to community leaders in the coming days to join us in this dialogue. So they're creating a task force to, to do what? Okay, hold on. Let me reread that. I read that, but it went completely like in one ear and out the other. I didn't understand the sentence. We are assembling an internal cross-functional team okay they're creating the task force to develop proposals designed to preserve our mission of inspiring people to explore the world together okay which you already do while also so they're creating a task force to to investigate this that's basically what it sounds like they're creating a team to do what they've already been doing but also to look at some of the changes that they made beforehand it, it's a very weird way to kind of like word it, but it just sounds like they're creating a team specifically designed around this subject. Our goal is to build fun and engaging experiences that remain true to our mission. And we thank you for challenging us with thoughtful and constructive feedback. The, the Antic team. So, man, bro, like that's that, a response like this might not make a lot of people happy. But to be honest, I didn't think they was going to respond at all. I didn't think they had to, uh, but they did. And I think that's way more uh, than a company would ever do for any kind of gaming community of this size. So uh, kudos to them. And yeah, one of the tweets that I saw that popped up about it was here from the trainer club saying, thank you for the prompt response. Uh, we appreciate you hearing our amazing community's voice. And we look forward to the start of helping progress for Pokemon Go app for the best trajectory for this amazing community. I'm here for any feedback needed. And um, they said, I know this is not exactly the end result we wanted, but we requested a response by EOD Monday and got it same day. Baby steps in the marathon of making Pokemon grow great is our mission. Proud of everyone who participated in getting to hear constructively rock. So I think this is really healthy. This is really good. Like they said, this is a conversation that you're actually having from the community with the gaming company, which is way more than you can ever ask for, especially with, again, with a company with numbers this uh, large. So yeah, uh, I'll let you guys know what the result of this is in terms of like what they end up implementing or not implementing. But it seems like the fact that there is a dialogue is is more than enough as a start or as a basis. And gaming, and here's a cool topic, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, one of the best fighting games of all time, one of my favorite soundtracks for video games of all times. No cap, no exaggeration. Uh, if you know, you know, if you wanna take you for a ride. Uh, Disney game developer looking to re-release Marvel vs. Capcom 2 following a YouTuber's campaign. So for those of you guys who don't know, Maximilian Du, the OG FGC YouTuber content creator himself, uh, did it hashtag August 2nd said hashtag free Marvel vs. Capcom 2. 12 years since Marvel vs. Capcom was released and seven years since it was pulled from stores and sent to digital jail. One of the most celebrated games of all times. Please retweet if you like to have Marvel vs. Capcom out of jail. Uh, and he tweeted out to Capcom, Marvel games, and Digital Eclipse. I believe when Marvel vs. Capcom came out too, I think I had it for Dreamcast. I think that's when it originally came out for. I'm not exactly sure where the hard copies released. I think there's like a PS2 version as well, but apparently if you wanna play Marvel vs. Capcom 2, 
It's like, you can't. And if it does, you gotta spend a lot of money. But there's a quick clip by um, Maximilian Dude. We'll just watch this really fast so you guys can be in the know and you can help and join the movement of such a beautiful game, by the way. I would like to start a Twitter hashtag, which is hashtag free Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Free MVC2 from its imprisonment that it's been stuck in for the past seven years of it being unreleased, unavailable, and unpurchasable. That's to get terrible. as many people to remind crime. Digital Eclipse, Marvel, and Capcom how important Marvel vs. Capcom 2 actually is to you, much less the history of video games. How much do you love Marvel 2? And give them a reason to bring that back. I want to get as many Marvel vs. Capcom 2 fans, people that would be interested in buying a MVC2 re-release on modern day systems mm -hmm. or PlayStation 4 or whatnot, mm -hmm. you know? Make it with functioning online, slightly better HD visuals, something that would at least allow us to enjoy the game together in the modern day. I'm gonna ask for your guys' help to get this uh, potentially a thing that'll get trending in some way to get Marvel vs. Capcom 2 back out of jail <laughs> where it's been stuck for way too damn long. Marvel vs. Oh, that brings back New memories. Age of Heroes. That brings back memories. If you guys don't, again, if you don't know, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and also I want to say like CVS 2, uh, I think it's Capcom vs. SNK. Uh, but yeah, those were like two monumental, much more older games that definitely established a new age of heroes, literally of fighting games. This was like the one with like the infinite combos. <laughs> and uh, it would be really great. It's kind of reminiscent of like, you know, Smash players asking for May uh, to be, you know, re-released or digitally remastered by Nintendo. Now, we know that well, Nintendo would never do that, so they had to go ahead and do it their own using the, the Slippy and the emulators and stuff. But um, with Marvel vs. Capcom potentially reaching out to Capcom, maybe they can actually have their luck and actually have a digital version of this be re-released in 2022, 2023 in the future. That would be magnificent. So yeah, that's Marvel vs. Capcom 2 and everyone trying to revive the game so that everyone can play it now. Let me know how you guys feel about the situation. I would love to play it i mean i'm currently playing guilty gear i can't have more than one fighting game under my belt because then i just end up doing nothing if i have too many games that i'm playing at one point in time then i stop being productive in life so right now my current go-to game is uh guilty gear strive i'm absolutely enjoying that game but i know there's a lot of people who would love to continue to play Marvel versus capcom 2 and you should never put video games as great as that in some kind of digital jail where they can't be assessed by the public in my opinion but all right guys that's all i have for today's video if you made it to the end uh do me a favor leave a like on the video uh it helps out a lot uh subscribe if you guys haven't already thanks for watching my video if you watched it on my birthday that's even cooler and if you didn't watch it on my birthday but that's you know completely fine as well um as a reminder i will be streaming today twitch.tv slash inferno omni i don't know what i'm going to be streaming but i'm going to have a birthday stream on twitch so you guys can come join me on there and um yeah, I look forward to making more content with you guys in the future and, and just doing my best, man, because that's that's all I can do, right? Right, so uh, yeah, I'm going to go make this video for you guys. Yes, I'm making, I'm working, I'm editing. I'm working for you guys on my birthday, but, you know, it's, you know, I, I enjoy what I'm doing. It's so cool that I've, I've, I've found something to do in life that I actually want to do on a day where people will play, sit back and relax. No, I want to spend it with you guys, which is pretty cool. I, mean, I spent time with, you know, friends and family over the the weekend as well. So now, you know, I saved the best for last. I saved you guys for last. So, <laughs> all right, I'm out. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you guys on the next video. And I'll, or I'll see you on the stream uh, later today, okay? Cool. All right, take it easy. Peace.